Meat Boy is back. Today I'm showing you guys another nutrient dense approachable recipe so that you can incorporate quality animal foods into your family's diet. Today it's mac and cheese and outside of the wheat pasta and the flour that's used to thicken the cheese mixture, it's not actually a bad choice. You have a ton of nutritious dairy products, butter, cream, milk, cheese that go into this and if you're using high quality raw grass-fed dairy it has all of the vitamins your body needs water soluble fat soluble minerals the only thing it's really missing is preformed omega fatty acids and if your gut's in a healthy state you can typically tolerate some amount of wheat uh, we're going organic to remove any glyphosate pesticide concerns and if you can go heirloom like einkorn spelt emmer wheat you might be better off so let me show you guys the ingredients. For pasta, I have organic durum wheat semolina shells from Whole Foods. Maybe the elbow macaroni is a little more traditional, but uh, this is good as well. Durum wheat compared to modern wheat, which is hard red winter wheat, is definitely less inflammatory. It's easier on your stomach. If you can get einkorn wheat pasta or not even wheat pasta, go for rice pasta, quinoa pasta, whatever you like that's easier on your stomach that you prefer. You know, the focus of this recipe is using the pasta as a carrier for the nutritious dairy-based animal foods. For the flour though, I do have einkorn wheat. So this is uh, from Jovial Foods. They were sold out of pasta. Normally I do get the pasta from them, uh, but it's up to you, whatever pasta and flour, it doesn't really matter. You could even do this without the flour if you wanted to. I'm sure it will thicken up just fine if you add more cheese. So this is the energy, this is the carbohydrate. We're getting some minerals, but it's mostly to feed our gut bacteria and give us some starch to keep us going. Uh, seasoning is really simple, very classic, typical to mac and cheese. Pepper, salt, and some smoked paprika. For the cheeses, again, very classic, typical to mac and cheese. We have some Gruyere and some American cheddar both of which we have on Frankie's Your Range Meat. Uh, I have a lot of extra Parmesan, so I might grate some up here, but maybe not. Uh, we need some butter. Uh, that's going to be used to make a roux. That's why we need flour. So the roux is a classic French component of many recipes. It's equal parts butter, equal parts flour. That is used to thicken sauces. Again, there's a bunch of other ways you can do that that don't have wheat, that aren't as inflammatory. But I think using you know a high-quality grass-fed butter and a high quality flour is perfectly fine. You know, I would prefer raw butter, but this is what we have on Frankie's syringe meat right now, and this is what we can provide for you guys. Uh, for the other dairy components, we have two cups of cream and two cups of milk. These are both from a local farm, raw grass fed. And all of these dairy components have a very similar nutrient profile. They're fat soluble vitamin heavy because they all have fats, but since the milk has a lot of protein, it has more water soluble vitamins the cheese has more protein than the butter or the cream. It has more water-soluble vitamins as well. Incredibly high calcium content. Overall, if you tolerate dairy, it really is one of the most approachable and nutritious foods to your diet. So we need to boil some water for the pasta. Very important that you're using a high quality water, which you removed the main concerns from the fluoride, the chlorine, the antibiotics, the chemicals, pesticide residue. Reverse osmosis can do that. Better off using a bottled water, but Whatever you do when you're cooking with water, when you're drinking water, make sure to check out the past videos I've done on water to ensure that you're keeping yourself healthy and free of the negatives of our modern life. So that's going to a boil. We're going to shred up all of this cheese. I don't think I went over measurements, so it's one pound of pasta, it's half a cup of flour, and half a cup of butter. For the cheeses, we want six cups total. So normally the recipe calls for three cups of Gruyere and three cups of cheddar. I'm going to do that and I think I'm going to add a bit of extra Parmesan uh, for the dairy products. It's two cups each of milk and heavy cream, uh, salt, paprika, black pepper. It's really up to your discretion. So I'm going to get all of this cheese grated and uh, the roux started in the pan. The butter's all melted. I'm going to turn the heat up to medium high and we're going to put in the half cup of flour. Now there's different degrees of roux that they have in French cooking. So, you know, you'll have a blonde roux, which has a little bit of flavor. You'll have a dark brown roux, which takes a long time and adds a lot of nuttiness. But for most recipes, we just want to cook out the flour flavor, which takes about two or three minutes. This texture here, which is like wet sand, is what we want. So the way I look at this is 
just make as much cheese sauce as you have ingredients for, and then you can always save the cheese sauce and add it to more pasta later. You know, it's super easy to boil pasta, but making this cheese sauce is something very involved, and it'd be nice to have a couple days worth of it, as opposed to one night dinner. And as you guys could see, I, I grated quite a bit of extra cheese, way more than I need, so. The main consideration we have to make here is, do you want to just do a one pot mac and cheese, or do you want to bake this in the oven? Because baking this in the oven involves spreading layers of cheese throughout the mac and cheese, as opposed to just throwing it all in the pot. So once we've cooked that flour flavor out of the roux, I'm going to add in my two cups of milk and two cups of cream. Turn down the heat to medium. And now we're gonna put in half of each of our cheeses. So, you know, we have three cups of cheddar, so we're gonna do one and a half cups of cheddar here. Three cups of Gruyere, so one and a half cups of Gruyere. Maybe not quite one and a half cups of Parmesan, it's a bit saltier, but around one cup. So that's really the base of our cheese sauce. Now we just have to melt this at a low temperature. We still have to season this, so I'm gonna do maybe a tablespoon of paprika. This is a lot of mac and cheese. Maybe a teaspoon of salt, and then plenty of black pepper. About a tablespoon. This is a bit thick because I added extra cheese, so I'm gonna add another cup of milk to get this to the right consistency. So cheese sauce is pretty much ready. We're gonna keep this warm. Water's still not boiling yet. Let's grease up our tin that we're gonna cook this in. I don't think all of this is gonna fit in one of these, so I'm gonna grease up two just in case. This is just the Finlandia butter. So we're gonna put our one pound of pasta in the water. A bit of salt. This cheese sauce has thickened up a lot. I'm gonna add another cup of milk. As I mentioned, there's two options. We can just mix the cheese sauce with the pasta, call it mac and cheese, or we can put it in the baking dish, layer some more cheese on top, and crisp it in the oven. That's the more traditional, comes out a little bit nicer. That's what we're gonna do today. Since we're baking the pasta in the oven, we do want it to be al dente. We don't really wanna cook this to the normal temperature. Right, pasta has been going eight minutes. We're gonna strain it off. As you can see, we have our strained pasta, our cheese sauce, and our three cheeses, the cheddar, the Parmesan, and the Gruyere. So now we're gonna spoon this cheese mixture into this pasta until we think there's enough cheese in it. And as I said, I think about half of this is gonna be good. So let's just do that. So that's pretty cheesy. I think I want it a bit cheesier. As with any of these, you know, healthy, nutrient-dense recipes, the goal is to use the pasta or the grain as a carrier for the animal food. So if we can, you know, overload the cheese a bit, that's what we want to do. Nothing too crazy. So that looks good. Put a layer of macaroni, about half of the macaroni, in the bottom here. Nice even layer. And we're gonna take a sprinkle of each of the cheeses. So, you know, a bit of cheddar, maybe two handfuls of cheddar, a handful of Gruyere, and a little sprinkle of Parmesan. I'm gonna kind of press that down a bit. Then we put the rest of the mac and cheese on top. Just gonna press this down a bit. And then the same thing we just did. So, I'm gonna put the rest of the cheddar on here, the rest of the Gruyere, There's legit like three pounds of cheese in this recipe. This could probably feed a family for like three nights. The cheddar, Gruyere, and a light sprinkle of Parmesan. Don't want to go too crazy because it's salty. It'll overpower everything. And there is our five pound masterpiece. So we're gonna pop this in the oven about 350 and let the cheese melt. With that bit of leftover cheese sauce, I'm actually gonna use it for my mom's scrambled eggs in the morning. So, you know, just a great way to use up leftovers. So it's been about a half an hour. I haven't really been keeping track, but it looks good right now. The cheese is nice and set. You could try to get like a brown crust on top, but you really don't have to. There's so much flavor in here, and if you heat it too much, a lot more oil might come out of the mac and cheese. I would say let this cool off for an hour, but it's pretty late and I wanna to go to bed, so. We're just gonna take out a corner piece. And as we would expect, a ton of cheese. 
looks really good. Hey, people on YouTube, I'm eating again with my brother's delicious mac and cheese, which I haven't had in a really long time. Yeah, I don't think she's had mac and cheese in probably three, four, five years. Whenever, whenever we started the carnivore diet, that's the last time she had mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. She's been having mm -hmm. some pasta with red sauce, but I haven't made mac and cheese or anything involved. Mm -mm. It's so good. I love it. Look how gooey that is. So delicious. So, you know, you want to tell the camera people about the crappy mac and cheese that mom and dad give us? Mm-hmm. It's horrible, right? Yeah, it was Kraft bread. It was like dry, like cheesy, gross, nasty. So, my parents are renowned for their lack of effort in culinary ability. And when they used to make us mac and cheese, and they still do it. My dad actually just made some tonight for himself. They take two slices of Kraft cheese with some skim milk in a pot and they melt it with some ronzoni oh, hot. Pot. it's pasta it's horrible this is like the complete opposite oh, so good. probably better than so whatever gooey. you get in a restaurant it's so tasty wow whatever my brother makes me it's so delicious and healthy mm. we'll see if she uh we'll see if she gains 10 pounds this week from all the sandwiches and pasta she's been testing well we'll see if i gain any weight which probably not hopefully not yeah, you know, when we keep the food quality high, everything's organic, nutritious. Mm. She's not even exercising and she doesn't gain weight. She eats pasta every day. Well, I, I, to, to, to be fair, I do exercise. I go walking a lot in the neighborhood, so it burns off some calories. Mm -hmm. If we can call that exercise. I love whatever my brother makes me. I'm not, I pretty much eat whatever he makes me. The best thing he ever made me was his the ribs with the sauce. She says something different every day. The ribs were good. She doesn't... I don't think she thinks the ribs were actually good because... We had those really beautiful, uh, the First Light New Zealand Wagyu short ribs, and I made this amazing barbecue sauce. And mm. after she had it for one day, she didn't want to eat the ribs anymore. She was sick of them. So she, I think she's a liar. I could eat 15 pounds of this mac and cheese. I'm sure you could, Gina. Well, I'm not going to because... She's already had five meals today, but it looks really good. I hope mm. you guys enjoy this recipe. I hope your kids like this recipe, your family mm. members. If you could please like the video. Leave a comment down below. Above all, please share the video if you can. If you do want to support me further, you know how to do so down in the description. We have um, these cheeses on Frankie's Free Range Meat at a more affordable price than even your local grocery store. Yeah. So thanks again for joining me today, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night, and I'll see you for tomorrow's video.